Podcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Wednesday, December the 16th, and I'm Donna Will, Professional Development Coordinator for the Developmental Disabilities Administration. We welcome you to the Maryland Community of Practice for Supporting Families webinar series. This is webinar number 15, Holiday Cheering Up. This session is being facilitated by Mary Ann Kane Brushy, Director of Family Supports for DBA. Also with us is Bernie Simons, Deputy Secretary, and Karen Harvey, PhD psychologist, author, trainer, and speaker. <laughs> um, all participants are in listen-only mode. There are two options for listening to the webinar by computer and by phone. And there is a handout for this webinar, which you can find in the handout section in the panel to your right. They can also be emailed if you are listening by phone. We are recording the webinar and later it will be posted on the DBA website. If we have time at the end, we'd love to hear from you about how you're planning to celebrate this very different holiday season and share your reflections on Dr. Harvey's presentation. In addition, we're interested in highlighting how people with disabilities and their families are supporting and caring for one another during this pandemic and throughout the webinar series. If you're interested in sharing your story, please contact Mary Ann King Brushy directly at mary.kane brushy at maryland.gov or me, donna.will at maryland.gov. So now I'd like to introduce Mary Ann King Brushy. Hi, everyone. On behalf of the Maryland Community Practice for Supporting Families, welcome to our holiday edition of this webinar series, Holiday Cheering Up. As Donna mentioned, we have two wonderful guests today, Deputy Secretary Bernie Simons and Dr. Karen Harvey, psychologist, author, trainer, and speaker. We thought, given it is the holiday season and considering the year that we've had, that we'd like to do something um, to boost our spirits. So with that, um, I'd like to welcome Deputy Secretary to um, share some of his thoughts and reflections and um, and his well wishes. So with that, welcome, Bernie. Thank you, Mary Ann. Um, good afternoon to everybody who's on the webinar and thank you for participating in today's webinar with Mary Ann as our, our host. Uh, we hope that the number of webinars, and I think we said it was either this is number 15 or somewhere around there, that all of the previous webinars that you've participated in have been extremely helpful. Um, I also want to wish everybody uh, a happy and safe holiday. Um, this has been a very challenging year. This is going to be very challenging throughout the holidays that are going to look uh, very different for everyone this year with uh, uh, keeping social distance uh, and, and not necessarily participating uh, with uh, large groups of families, uh, et cetera. I do want to thank everybody for their partnership and working with everyone to keep people safe and healthy through this uh, pandemic. Um, it, it's been a, a long, stressful time for everyone, and I recognize that. And to the people that we provide supports to in the families, I want to thank you. As you've worked with us on the redesign of services, you've been very creative and innovative in staying connected and staying safe and staying at home and, and and keeping all of the relationships that you have, including the relationship between uh, DDA and you and providers and uh, people who are self-directing, et cetera. To our direct support professionals, you're our front line. <coughs> Excuse me. Bernie, if you're speaking, you're you're muted. We're not hearing you. How about now? Yep, we're good. Thanks. Okay, sorry. That's okay, no problem. I guess there was another button on this cord that I didn't realize was a mute, so <laughs> I apologize. No problem. Okay, so our direct support professionals, you've done a great job. You're really frontline heroes. And, uh, you know, I want to thank you for all of the support and the commitment of coming to work in very, very difficult times. To our uh, CCSs, Coordinator of Community Services, you've been the front line of communication, 
you've done an outstanding job as we uh, started with this pandemic in March about we requested we wanted wellness checks specifically for the number of people who are living uh, at home um, you know to engage with the provider network you know we can hear directly from the providers for the people who are in residential but about two-thirds of the people are not in residential of the people we surprise provide supports for so it, it's been fantastic with what you've been doing and the information that you've been uh, giving to us and we really appreciate you to our providers you guys have been outstanding you've risen to the challenge you've been very innovative um, and able to provide supports to people in this really unusual time with using remote supports and and uh, a lot of other um, interventions to make sure that uh, people are safe and healthy, but also getting what we uh, have identified with individuals of what's important for them and to them in their person-centered plan. And I just want to say, now that we hear that the uh, vaccine and see that the vaccines are starting to come into uh, our state, and there'll be more and more. And as the governor uh, talked about yesterday, if you saw him on his uh, briefing, uh, as, as we continue to move forward, um, I think that we're gonna be able to see a, a much different year in this upcoming 2021. Um, I do think that there has been um, a little bit of a silver lining though in this pandemic. And what I mean by that is, you know, we've looked at uh, individuals and supports, families, service providers, et cetera. And, and just with the challenging times, what we've learned and what you have done with innovation with uh, technology uh, has just been outstanding to the point where um, I think that what we've seen through our Appendix K, which is uh, what we had to submit to the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, uh, be able to do business a little bit differently. A good example would be day programs closed down, uh, people was, were staying in their residential sites, so how were you able to deliver any day services? It was basically done either remotely, et cetera, but it could be done in a residential site, not in a day site. So people got real creative, and and as a result of that with the technology, there has been a lot of feedback that we at DDA have gotten about, you know, this has been a good opportunity for us to explore and to use remote to uh, be able to engage with individuals. Some people have expressed that they have got uh, a little more independence, that they don't, that they can do things on their own. Uh, we've heard from families that, um, and I think that was I think that was the uh, an email that came in the end of last week that basically said. I didn't realize the capability that my child had uh, in utilizing the iPad, uh, et cetera. And so obviously we've seen a lot of success stories. We've seen growth in individuals. And, and I, I just think it's been great. We've had families step in uh, to work as a direct support professionals, which we also put in uh, our Appendix K. And, you know, as we move forward, uh, we will continue with a lot of these um, interventions, for lack of a better term, that we put in Appendix K that was uh, approved by the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. And I do want to make a commitment that we will continue to be flexible, person-centered, and family-oriented. And as a result of that, I think we need to take a look at the people who are self-directing and the people who want to self-direct. And I think we need to uh, offer those opportunities um, <clears throat> as on the front end so that people can have much more uh, control over their own lives. You know, when I started here in 2014, we had five areas that we wanted to work on. One was self-direction, in addition to employment and housing and supporting families and self-advocacy. So those are the five areas. And so we've we've done well with self-direction. Our numbers have increased dramatically since 2014. We need to continue uh, to do that so that people have uh, that opportunity. So again, 
Uh, I want to thank everybody who's been participating uh, with us in DDA and keeping people safe, uh, who have been working with us with the design of and giving us feedback about what we should look like in the future because we've had this silver lining of seeing what we can do uh, things differently and, and get uh, good outcomes uh, for individuals. And so I just want to now basically say I hope everybody stays happy and safe during this holiday. And again, thank you for allowing me to uh, open this up. Thank you, Bernie. Your thoughts, reflection, encouragement are so very much appreciated. And you're absolutely right. While there have been such significant challenges and grief and loss, there's so much still to celebrate. And we just thank you for your vision going forward and particularly around flexibility. Thank you. And um, so with that, let's get to Karen. All right, Karen, and you're going to just let me know as you okay. want me to move the slides forward. Thank you, Marianne. I have great news. We have only 15 days left of 2020. Yay! Yay. <laughs> so this is your very short, but hopefully fun and interactive holiday cheer ing up <laughs> talk. <laughs> yes, it's not gonna look the same, but there are silver linings like Bernie just told us. And so next slide. You I got it. Thanks. I want you to grab a pen and paper if, if you want. Otherwise, you can just keep it in your head. But we're going to make some lists that are going to cheer you up, OK? Um, and they'll cheer me up. I know that. So first and foremost, next slide. Here's the list. We are going to celebrate. Make a list of all the things you don't have to do. Think about this. I hate to cook. I do not have to cook <laughs> big, big meals. I mean, little stuff, but still throw it together. I don't have to cook for 10 people. I don't have to listen to everybody's food allergies. I don't have to complain. <laughs> I don't have to listen to any of it. And I don't have to cook. I don't have to wrap. No, no, no. Sending some Amazon gift cards. That's it. And think about all the things you don't have to do. If you travel to see relatives, you don't have to do it. You've got a really good excuse and you don't have to do it. You know, I was thinking, gosh, I was thinking back, you know, woke up in the middle of the night, didn't do my square breathing. And I was thinking, oh, about the time going to my mother's house. Yes, with gifts. Yes, we're not doing that. And she has dementia now. And then I had a memory of her not liking her gift, of her <laughs> yelling at me because I didn't say the right thing when I got my gift. And I thought, you know, that's some loss, but it's not all completely bad. I love her, don't get me wrong. But let's think about all the things we don't have to do. Drive long distances, put up with traffic, Congratulations, you get a break. It might not seem like a break, it might not feel like a break, but it kind of is if you think about it. Okay, there's some things, I bet there's some things on your list. And here's the beautiful thing, you don't have to tell anybody. <laughs> so next slide. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to make a list, another list. Now, list number two, you can number them. List number two, make a list of what you are going to do just for you. Because you've got mm. some extra time. Send <laughs> big wrapped gifts. Gift cards are fine. You can do them over email. You can do more for you. I want all of you to take a minute and write down three things that are really special that you're going to do for you. Okay? I'm not kidding. You got to do more for you because this is how we survive. This is survival. Yes. Three things you're going to do for you. It could be something you're not going to do. Like me, you're not going to cook. I'm not going to cook at all. Yeah. I'm so excited. 
like from now until January. I'm not cooking. <laughs> I might cook a little bit, but I'm going to shut that down. What fun things are you going to do just for you? I'm talking to families. I'm talking to CCSs, DSPs, providers, you hardworking people in the state. Just for you. Okay, you got it? Yeah. Next. Good. Yeah. Now, I want you to buy a gift for yourself. Now <laughs> this, you can wrap. <laughs> That's great. A little bow just for you. Because I know you've got a little extra money. We're not buying that big turkey in that ham and everything else. Yes. Spend it on yourself. Be nice to you. Okay. Write down special gift you're going to get for you. I have a friend who gets herself a piece of jewelry every holiday. And she's like, I love myself. That's how she talks. I love her. I love myself and I buy for myself first. We can all love <laughs> Her name is Franny. She's one of my dearest friends. I love myself. I buy for myself first. Thank you for your name. <laughs> Let us learn from Franny, okay? Buy yourself a gift and that gift you can wrap. Okay, <laughs> next slide. Now, I want you to think about all the stress you are missing. Now, I don't mean to say <laughs> that your holiday party is stressful. I'm not saying, I'm just saying, if you know what I'm talking about. Look at that face. I found this on the internet. I love this picture. Look at the face of that woman. <laughs> Or maybe that time that one of your coworkers drank a little too much <laughs> and they're still talking about it and said some things to you you really didn't want to hear, you didn't want to know about. <laughs> Think about all the things you don't have to go through, like holiday parties, like all those other things about holidays that you can kind of duck and dodge and not have to be a part of. Yes, this is good news. This is actually good. And if you do have a little bit of stress, because there's always a little bit of stress, because we know the holidays bring up stuff. No one's at their no one's at their best 2020, right? We're all not at our best. And then no one's at their best in the holidays. So we're like a grouchy group of grumps. And that's okay. Give yourself a break. It's okay to be a grouch. It's okay to be a grump. I get it. So if you start feeling really grouchy and really grumpy, next slide, we're going to go right back to square breathing. Okay? <laughs> so we're going to just let it go. And don't be mad at yourself if you said the wrong thing. It's the holidays. It's stressful. So you snapped a little. So <laughs> Nobody's keeping track, but sometimes they are. But let it go. It doesn't matter. So now we're going to do this again. You've done it before. If you've been following me, maybe not. But this is a wonderful technique where you can really decompress because we need to breathe. During stressful times, we've got to breathe. Sometimes you stop breathing. You know what happens when you really stop breathing? Then we die. <laughs> so thank goodness we still can breathe, but we got to breathe right. You got to breathe and get all your stale air that you're carrying around with you and your grouchy ways like, hey, I got my stale air. Get rid of that stale air, right? Get that breath of deep, fresh, wonderful air. So let's try this. We're going to start at the top left-hand corner. We're going to take a deep breath in. Hold for four seconds. Let it out for four seconds. Then hold for four seconds so you get it all out. Now, some of you are not doing this, I can tell. So we're gonna do it again, okay? Because you need this, trust me. Okay, four seconds in. Four seconds hold. Four seconds out. All four seconds all the way out. Stop and do this when the kids are getting on your nerves. When the husband says that dumb thing or that ex makes that phone call that you just didn't want to have, 
You know what I'm talking about. Or the in-laws. Guess what? Those one are one of the people you don't have to see. I love my in-laws. May they rest in peace. But you know, hey, I'm just saying, there are some gifts. And the minute that stress starts, because you got that phone call or you got that text or you saw that email, close it. Sit in your happy place. Look at a square or picture a square and do some breathing. And you're going to have a better holiday. Next slide. Okay. okay. Now, here's what you can do. And I highly recommend this. I want everybody to watch their favorite Christmas videos or holiday videos or whatever. But take a minute to cheer yourself up. Okay? Because it's really nice. So here's my favorite. First one. We, you know, we're hoping this will work. Oh, look at this. Marianne, you're a master. Sorry for the ads, but guys. Hold on one sec. Uh, oh, sugar. All right. So um, let's get that. And do full there screen. Yeah. There we go. And enlarge. Yay. But we don't have your sound. You don't have sound? Nope. Mm. So oh. I. Okay. Well, that's a favorite video. Do, 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 do. I got it. So, okay. We can let that go. But you can right. watch that favorite video. I think you might have to go to, uh, I don't know what, audio, click on audio, but that's all right. And let's try now. The second video, if you're a more grouchy type, where you really like to, you know, that, that the dark side of the holidays, you can not watch the trolls. They are not the dark side of the holidays. In fact, they're a little too cheerful for some of us. Watch the Grinch, right? I love the Grinch. Uh, I married a Grinch now. He's so wonderful, but he doesn't like Christmas. So <laughs> watch the Grinch. You're a mean one. I promise I won't sing anymore. So ne next slide. We didn't have the sound, but we had the spirit, right, you guys? And so next slide. This is a secret list. Okay, now, I want you to make a list of who you don't have to deal with. Yay. I'm going to put it out there because he would never be on this webinar. My brother. My brother and his politics. <laughs> don't get me started. Not that I don't love him, which I do. Not that I didn't say I would miss him, which I did say. And I will actually miss his girlfriend, who I like a lot. <laughs> but uh, he got lucky, if you know what I mean. So make a list and don't show it to anybody. Yes, there are gifts. There are gifts here. And they don't have bows on them, but there are gifts. Next list, I mean, next slide, thank you, which is another list. Now, I want you to make a list. It's gonna take a minute because it's hard. It may not be that long, and I understand that, of what you appreciate in 2020. Okay, guys, I'm gonna challenge you to come up with at least three things. I'm gonna give you a minute because I know it's hard, but there are things to appreciate. All right, you got your list. Here's why I'm telling you. Next slide. So, Oops. hold on a moment. Um, hmm, I froze up here. Sorry. Sorry. That's Hold okay. on. We'll do this again. I'm sorry. No problem. Because, and I'm just going to talk because appreciation is survival. And one thing we can appreciate is from what I can tell, we're not dead. 
<laughs> Life is precious. Hey, we didn't die. This is great. I have been appreciating being alive. You know, seeing those numbers on television really brings it home, doesn't it? And life is precious. So that's number one on my list. So next slide. And here's why I want to challenge you one more time. Do the gratitude journal. Trust me. I think I shared, you know, Martin Seligman talks about the gratitude journal uh, in a great book called Learned Optimism. That's a good cheer up book. That's a great Christmas present for yourself. But don't make that the first one. You got to have something really fun first. So, but in Learned Optimism, he says, write a gratitude journal. And I kept trying to do it. But at the end of the day, as I've told many people, I was just tired. I wanted my glass of Chardonnay. I wanted to watch Netflix. I used to say, watch Netflix and chill. A young person told me to stop saying that unless that's what I was doing, which it wasn't. And relax. I'm not writing any damn journal. But what I did was I started doing it in the morning about what I'm grateful for, for the day before. And that gives me quite a boost. Woo! I had a couple of good things happen yesterday. It cheers you up. So this study was done. I've talked about it before, so you can take a little nap if you've heard this. There were, it was out of the Emmons lab and they study the effects of gratitude and appreciation. He calls it the gratitude studies. And he's a PhD researcher, brilliant guy, but he had three groups of people, very simple study. Group number one had to write down every single day the good things. Group number two wrote down the, just the facts, good and bad. And group number three wrote down just the bad. Well, guess what? At the end of just weeks, the group number one that was writing all the good stuff reported feeling more alert, more energy, more hopeful, more focused, right? And, and really happy about their lives. And the group that was just writing the facts actually felt less happy. So, you know, that kind of journal where you just write it all down, give it up, just do gratitude. And then finally, that last group really got depressed to the point where they had to stop the study. It was very sad. I mean, it's kind of a mean thing to do to people. But it's also what we do. We so naturally go to the problem. We so naturally focus on what's wrong. We, okay, that's good, so I don't have to think about it. So I'm going to think about what's wrong, and I'm going to worry about it, and I'm going to stress, and I'm going to try and figure it out, and I'm going to make myself have a giant headache. So <laughs> let's pull back and go back to what's right. And the more we can spend our mental time and mental energy in what's right, the more energy we have to fix what's wrong, the more hope we have to see the solution. And the more inspiration we have to go the next step. So to retrain ourselves to look at what to appreciate. And I think 2020 has been a wonderful time for that to really reflect. Like because we are we are alive, and because you know even you know those of us who have lost someone are are so sad, but also so grateful for the people we haven't lost because it brings it home. Those of us who have had scares are so grateful. I have a dear friend who's been in the hospital since Thanksgiving who just got out. Thank goodness. Thank goodness, right? So there's so many beautiful things to be grateful for. And our brain will go where we direct it to. So we got to take the driver's seat. Drive it to what's right. Drive it to optimism. Drive it to joy. Drive it to hope. You are in the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. And next slide. Sure. I have a dear friend who passed away also, um, not from COVID. She passed away two years ago from a long battle with cancer. But she was the most optimistic person I knew. We worked together in a really horrible job, right? And we used to just, you know, come in and just work all day. And his boss was mean. 
the other people were mean. We worked with the homeless and it was so sad. We never had enough beds. It was terrible and depressing. We had nightmares every night. And she would always say, just think about a year from now, because we were both looking for jobs. <laughs> just think about a year from now. And no matter what was going wrong, she'd say, it's fine. Think about a year from now. We're going to fix this. And think about a year from now. A year from now, Christmas will be so different. So my daughter had an idea. Um, my daughter, the same one I told you didn't want to celebrate her birthday, who, you know, can, she can be a little bit of a grouch herself. But she said, you know what, you guys, let's have Christmas in July. Let's have a big party. So we are so excited. I'm going to have a tree. I don't know where I'm going to find one, but oh, we've got the fake one. That's good. <laughs> but we're gonna, at least we can roll out that fake one. And we're going to have our reindeers and our Santas. And we're going to have a barbecue. And then I'm going to wrap up all the gifts. And I'll get my husband to cook because we'll be barbecuing. He likes to do that. So that's great. And we're going to have Christmas in July. And then I just want you all to think about a year from now and think about how we're going to appreciate things we never appreciated before. Another gift of COVID. And last slide. Is it the last one? Nope, not the last one. <laughs> do, we, do you want me to go back? No, no. Or, this is good. Okay, I okay. Have one more because I always put that last one in and I forgot. Okay. Okay. Marianne, you're doing great. Okay. So now for our, our last exercise, actually, let's say it's the second to the last. I want you to write down five things you're going to do when the world opens back up. I'm going to be drinking margaritas at my favorite Mexican restaurant inside. And the mariachi band might even be there. I don't know. Five things you're going to do. That can include who you're going to hug. Big hugs. That's right. It's going to be great, you guys. going to be wonderful. Promise yourself you won't forget what it's like not to have it so that you can really enjoy it when you get it. And last slide. Boom, boom. Congratulate yourself. This is the exercise. Pat yourself on the back. Woohoo! Woohoo! You're amazing. Look at what you've accomplished. If I told you a year ago that you were going to accomplish the things you accomplished in 2020 and do everything backwards and upside down, you'd say no way. No way. But you did it and you're doing it. You're amazing. You are amazing. Celebrate yourself. Yay for you. Thank for you. <laughs> and Karen, on behalf of all of us, we'd like to celebrate you and, and thank you for this inspiring um, cheering up. And um, boy, what fun and, and really some really great thoughts and things to think about to, to bolster us and, and moving forward. And so with that, what we'd love for, what we'd like to do right now, if any of you in the audience um, would be interested in sharing your ideas, reflections, or your plans, um, how you're cheering yourself up or others up. We, we really would love to, to hear from you and you can just enter it into the chat box. And I'm not sure, Patricia, are you able to um, see the chat box? Or I don't know that Aaron's on. I can't see. Hmm. Marianne, this is Donna. Hi. I don't hey, see any questions in the um, question box. Okay. Okay. Maybe we, we can, can wait. Ask the panelists. Oh. 
Donna, Marianne, Patricia. Sure. Um, Patricia, do you want to, would you like to talk about some things that you might do or plan to do or? Looks like Patricia's about doing? out. Okay, <laughs> okay. Well, I can talk, I, I can talk about, um, one, well, actually, I'd like to talk about something that I'm, I'm really grateful um, for. And, and that is, I, I have to tell you that I, there, there actually is so much to be grateful for. And that's the wonderful thing. The moment you start thinking about um, being grateful, there, there are so many things. But one in particular, and as it pertains to the work that we do and the lives that we live, caring and supporting people with developmental disabilities, I just have to give a huge shout out to the direct support professionals and um, who have supported my daughter and us through through this this very difficult time and you know Karen you mentioned a part of you know the negativity and and the worry but it, a lot of that um, is fueled by fear and um, fear of people becoming sick people dying um, fear of not being able to see, in my case, my daughter, and what does that look like? And, and when you're consumed in fear, you you just tighten up, right? And you you stop seeing possibility, and and it just fear begets fear and angst and all of that. And what I have had to learn to do is really trust that those folks supporting her, and not that I didn't before, but even more so now because we're unable to see her as frequently or be with her as frequently as as we had been, and they're just doing a fantastic job and um, I just want to applaud them and, and thank them for the work that they do. So you know who you are out there. Thank you. Okay. It looks like we have um, some, we're starting to get some more comments. Um, awesome. uh, reflection. We are able to connect to so many more people through virtual formats. So true. We are so excited. You know, be able to start in person programming again soon. What a joy. <laughs> it will be in the same space again. Yep. Um, the other person who um, made the first comment said, I attended a Zoom holiday party and people attended from across the United States. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. And we have we have another comment. Um, just want to thank you for making me laugh so much. This is a great presentation. This is greatly appreciated in a pretty rough year. Um, you're welcome. Thank and you. Another person says, "I go on a long drive. I'm not sure. Um, uh, maybe you might want to talk a little bit more about that, so we can um, understand what you mean." I do that sometimes too. I do too. Yeah. Yeah. How about um, what are what are some things that um, other people are going to do once the world opens up again? How about you, um, Donna? Do you want to do you want to add to it or? Uh, personally, um, yeah, I'm looking yeah. forward to traveling. We had we have another uh, other person that talked about taking a long drive says they want to drive across the country. And Ooh, I really that is a long love drive. that idea. I have fantasies about going in a Winnebago <laughs> all the way across the country and, and bringing pets with me. I don't know why I think about that, but it's, it's something that, um, that does sound exciting. And, um, you know, you, I guess you kind of feel like you don't want to stop on the road in places that where you don't, you know, and you don't know the people. If they're, you know, if they're carrying, um, you know, the spreading the, the virus and, you know, you think about what, you know, yeah. when things do open up, it's like, and, and we're all, we all have our vaccines. It's, it's very nice to think that, that, you know, we don't have another thing to worry about. So, um, yeah, we're looking forward to that time. Um, we have another person say, um, thank you. Uh, we do not always take time to pay attention to the self. This was a great reminder to keep self first. Oh, our traveler friend says um, they want to visit home <laughs> to Europe. So ah. these plans are getting more and more involved as, as we go along. 
Um, good, for, good, uh, good, good. Bernie Simons or Donna Will. Um, will some or all of the flexible processes offered under Appendix K be extended beyond its expiration in March 2020? And that's a really good question. Um, Bernie is no longer on on our um, webinar, but that is definitely something we can ask about and um, and um, and Patricia Patricia Gerald. hasn't gotten back on. Um, let me just just check. no. Okay, okay, yeah, no, we can get. Away. Um, we have another uh, participant who says we are so excited to gather everyone in our kitchen again for. Awesomely fun yes. cooking classes. Aww. And we have another comment from Trevor the Traveler. Just he's he's <laughs> got a new, um, a new name, a new nickname for himself. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll all get to meet in a um, in a conference in the future. I kind of miss planning the conferences because I I feel connected with people when we do that. I mean, I kind of, you know, the planning can be a little um, intense at times, but I, I, um, I'm I grateful to, admit, you know, this this time where we haven't been able to convene in that way, I, it makes you grateful for what you do have. But I also, on the other hand, feel grateful for being able to have virtual experiences. And like that other person said, um, you know, I, I was on a Zoom call with people from the UK and and Italy, and I was getting a lesson, a music lesson from someone in Italy, and it was just, uh, I wouldn't have been able to have that, op you know, opportunity in, in the middle of winter. So, yeah, I mean, uh, thank you, Karen, for, for um, you know, letting us um, reflect on the gratitude and, and encouraging us to have those gratitude journals. Hey, Donna, I'm wondering if we could try a little experiment here before we go. Would it be possible to allow everyone to open up their video so we could all see one another? And just um, to do a, a holiday wave? I mean, just to, I miss seeing people and connecting. I, I can see Karen, um, which makes, which is lovely. Um, but so there's Donna, but can we open it up to our entire audience? We, we can if we um, bring them into the panel, but- oh, um, okay. What we could do is we could open mics and mute people, but that it, if people don't mute, um, I may have yeah. to mute people so it doesn't overwhelm us with um, sounds that we're not used to. Okay. Well, I think it's it's probably prohibitive, but um, but with that, I um, unless we have any other comments, um, do we? Are there any? Yes. Um, oh well, then go ahead. We have a comment from Meg. Um, thank you so much. This was a great cheering up. So Yay. Um, we have another one. Being together with our groups nationally and internationally has been really s inspiring, but there's nothing like being in the same space. Oh, I know. Thankful That's for new true. growth and friends across the world, but so ready to hang out in the same space again soon. <laughs> with the same old people. <laughs> <laughs> You want those old people back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I also wonderful. see many opportunities for us to advocate for equal pay for DSPs, equal access for health care, people living with disabilities, and more. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, ladies, so much. This presentation is great. You can see your hearts through your smiles. That's... Oh. <laughs> oh. No. Um, we feel yours. We feel yours. We do. We do. And we just so much want you all to be well. And um, and for those of you who have lost people who are close to you, our hearts are with you. And um, But going forward, we hope you all are well and, and truly do have a wonderful holiday season. And I would be remiss if I don't go to my next slide. I can't go to my next slide. It won't move. But um, my next slide just says thank you, Karen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Donna. Thank you. Um, and thank you to, to Deputy Secretary Bernie Simons and Patricia, who was on previously. Um, couldn't do any of this without you. And Karen, you, you just inspire all of us and you have lightened our hearts and our load. And so 
go forth, everyone, um, with a lighter heart and happy holidays. And oh, I know what I was supposed to tell you. Our next webinar is January sixth. Um, we were we are going to revisit EVV. Um, and it's going to be an opportunity for people to provide feedback and ask questions and get answers from from different folks. So um, we'll see you in January. Take care. Much love. Bye bye. Enjoy. Enjoy. Thank you, Karen. Thanks, Donna. Bye bye. Thank you.